Hello and welcome back to Teal House Farm. Today we have the much anticipated, highly requested sweet sourdough bread recipe to share with you. And we are gonna show you how to make it from start to finish, including making the starter. So Ivy here is gonna help me now. Micah is gonna come help me in a bit and we're gonna show you the whole process. So first, Ivy, let's show them what they need. So this is everything you need for the whole process. And the whole process actually takes about a week. So you have to have some patience here, but that's true with any sourdough. So what do we need, Ivy? Uh, pans. Good, so we have two cast iron bread pans. You can use a different kind of bread pan, but I prefer the cast iron. Um, I just, the bread always comes out nice and crisp. Um, crust on the bottom and it pops out without any struggle unlike my Teflon pans which I felt like no matter how much I greased them something would always stick. Pan the bread comes out of these pans perfect every time. Next we need this. What's this? A glass, I think? Jar. a glass jar. So we're using an old pasta sauce jar. You can use a mason jar. Um, I really recommend using a glass container. Um, you do need a lid for it and this is almost too small. I usually use a half gallon sized mason jar, um, but this is a 32 ounce pasta sauce jar. And this will get us started. If you're going to keep your sourdough starter alive for a long time, you're gonna get more and more and more, and you might need a larger jar. So that's for starters. We need some sugar. Sugar, that's right. And some uh, flour. Good, bread flour. This is yeast. You need some sort of active dry yeast. This is not actually bread machine yeast. I've just been reusing the container because I buy yeast in bulk. So this is just regular active dry yeast in here. You need salt and vegetable oil. Vegetable oil, good. And do you know what these are? These are instant mashed potato flakes. Just buy the cheapest ones, don't get anything fancy. One of the questions I have gotten before from people, especially if you are health conscious, is can I substitute the oil? Can I substitute the sugar? And my answer is, I have no idea. I love this bread just the way it is. And this is basically the only recipe I use ever that uses vegetable oil. And I don't think I will ever change that because I like it just the way it is. It's perfect. So. Um, if you want to try messing around and substituting things, go ahead. This is not meant to be a healthy bread. Um, this is not a true crusty sourdough where you use the whole wheat to create your own yeast. This is a sweet sourdough. It's meant to be a very um, moist and delicious bread. Um, we love to eat it with soups. It's a great side with soups. So Ivy, we're going to go ahead and get started. We are going to show you how to make your starter. All right. The starter, we don't need our bread pan now. So to make the starter, we just need the jar. We need the sugar, Ivy. This is three quarters of a cup of sugar. We need no, just one cup. yeast, good, and the mashed potatoes. That's it. It starts the starter, and we will also need one cup of warm water, which we will get last. The recipe calls for one package of the yeast. That's equal to two and a quarter teaspoons if you're like me and you don't buy yeast in packages, but in bulk. To start, we are going to dissolve the yeast in one cup of warm water. So Ivy's going to pour the water in the jar. It's hot, it's hot. There it is. There you go. I'm going to add two and a quarter teaspoons of the yeast if, um, if you don't buy your yeast in bulk, that's the same as one package of yeast, so just one pack. And Ivy here is going to give it a gentle stir. And now we let it sit for five minutes. It has been five minutes now. Ivy will add the sugar. And now we will do four tablespoons of the mashed potato flakes. I don't think you Instant want potato flakes, whatever you call them. That's not a good scoop. I'm going to get a scoop. I don't know. This is hard, though. There's one. Okay. 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 
And then we will just put the cap on top. We're not going to seal it shut, like ring it on, turn it on all the way. But we're just going to sit the cap on top to keep stuff from getting in there. Okay. Yep, and we're going to leave it out at room temperature for 24 hours. We'll come back and show you what this looks like at about, um, I don't know, 8 to 10 hours. Just so, you and I have, just so you have an idea of what the growth should look like. Again, this isn't your traditional wheat flour, crusty bread, sourdough. You're not going to see the dramatic rise like you do on that type of sourdough starter. So I'm going to show you what it looks like so you know what to expect. promise you the starter is not dead. This is just a very slow starter. Everything about making this bread is... A lot of slow and patience and waiting even when it has to do its final rise so we will come back and show you what this looks like at the end of the day but it's going to sit out at room temperature for a full 24 hours all right Micah now is gonna help me we have our starter so this has been in the fridge for five days um, so after it's been in the fridge for that time sorry the baby's being loud uh, we're gonna go ahead and feed it again and it's gonna sit out at room temperature all day. So somewhere 10 to 12 hours. And then um, before I go to bed tonight, we will make the dough to make the loaves, but it's gonna to have to rise overnight. And then we'll have to punch it down, knead it, separate it into loaves, and then the loaves have to rise. So like I said, this is kind of a long process, but we're gonna go ahead and use my um, starter that we've been using for about a month now um, so that we don't have to wait the almost week it takes to wait for your starting starter that we just started to be ready to use. So, Micah, we are going to feed this with some potato flakes, some sugar, and some warm water. So, first we're going to start with one cup of warm water. I love you too. Okay, and then three cups of white sugar. Sorry, three quarter cup. Three quarters of a cup of white sugar. It's a lot of sugar. It is a lot of sugar. This is not a healthy bread. This is a yummy bread. Okay, and we're going to do three tablespoons of the instant mashed potatoes. It smells like a fruit, like candy. It does. That's the sour part. It's fermenting the fermenting the starter. One. Two. It does have a very sweet smell, a very sweet and sour smell. I like it. Okay, give it a gentle stir with that spoon. Kind of just reach in there. It looks like ice that's all mushy to me. We have put the lid back on. I'm not gonna tighten it all the way down, just the lid sitting on there with the ring on top, but not screwed on. And we're going to let this sit out all day at room temperature. Okay, so there's the starter we just fed. Just to show you, this is the one we made today for this video. And you see how much it rose, which is quite a lot. It is going to fall, and I will show you this again at the end of the day. Um, so do not be discouraged. does not mean that you killed it. This is just different than a traditional crusty sourdough starter. Now we're just going to go about our day and come back tonight around uh, once we get the kids in bed, and I'll show you how to make the dough. almost 12 hours it's been like 11 hours since I um, fed the starter and I'll show you so this is the new starter that I started with you first thing this morning to just show you how it was done and again this has to sit at room temperature for 24 hours so we're almost halfway there and then it's going to go in the fridge for five days okay and you can already see get this close enough it's starting to fall a little bit it, it got up to about here and then I was starting to fall that is totally normal. You did not kill your starter. After that five days in the fridge, you pull it out and you feed it, which is what we did, um, what we did earlier today. And then um, it's going to start to bubble, but it's not going to be crazy. You know, this is just a little bit. 
This is a very slow moving, slow growing starter. We fed it this morning and then we sat it out on the counter at room temperature all day, which was, uh, like I said, it was like 10, 11 hours, something like that, okay? And now we are going to make the bread, we're gonna make the dough, and it's going to sit um, on the counter at room temperature overnight before we actually make it into individual loaves. And then tomorrow, about lunchtime, we will be all ready to bake it and eat it. So let me show you how we turn our starter into some dough. This is where we need to pull out our other ingredients. We have our vegetable oil, our bread flour, we have some salt, we have uh, just a little bit more sugar, and we're gonna need some more water, and a cup of our starter. It doesn't particularly matter what order you put everything in. We're gonna give the starter just a gentle swirl to kind of get more of that potato residue on the bottom here. And then we're gonna measure out one cup into our bowl. We are going to add one tablespoon, again this makes multiple loaves, so that's a lot of salt, one tablespoon of salt, one third of a cup of sugar, one half of a cup of vegetable oil, and one and a half cups of warm water. And then the final ingredient is six, that's right, six cups of bread flour. I have in fact made this with all-purpose flour before. It comes out pretty good. Bread flour definitely helps you get a better rise though. You get a better um, gluten structure, which really helps your bread rise. Now we're gonna mix, this is a lot of dough. Um, I find it's easier to just kind of turn it over like this and then once it gets somewhat put together like a dough I actually just get in there with my hands and almost knead it together into a ball This is obviously a it's a very thick dough if you um, Want to use your KitchenAid mixer with a dough hook on it? That would work really well too. I'm actually going to take this out, pinch it up out here. You're not going to do a, a lot of kneading at this point. We're just trying to get it all put together in a ball, really well mixed in together. And then I'm just going to use the same bowl that I mixed it up in. I'm going to add just a little bit of oil to the bottom swirl it around and then put the dough on there and give it a turn so that the oil is on the top. And now we're going to leave it overnight to prove. So you can cover it in saran wrap. It does have to be covered. I like to take an old bread bag and I slit it so that one of the sides is open and I find that this fits perfectly over my mixing bowl to give a nice um, proving bag without having to waste any plastic or wrestle with saran wrap so I can use it over and over again. So um, it's going to rise, or in this case it'll spread out because this bowl is a little bit shorter. Um, and in the morning it'll be quite a bit larger than this and we'll be ready to make our loaves um, out of the dough. There is not a lot of kneading with this recipe. We're going to knead it briefly in the morning. This is not a recipe where you're going to uh, need to stand there for, you know, 10 minutes, 20 minutes kneading your loaves. It's not that kind of bread. So we'll leave this here on the counter for morning and then we'll come back in and check on it. Our leftover starter is just going to go back in the fridge uh, for three to five days and then we can make, feed it again and make something else with it. So he's done for now. morning we are back and our dough has risen very nicely I'll show you again this is not a dramatic dough at all so everything's very slow and subtle but it's definitely much larger than it was yesterday and it is ready to be put in our loaf pans for its final rise so what I'm going to do here I'm going to flour the table just a little bit Put it 
go down and pull it out. And we're just going to give it a couple of kneads. This is not a heavy kneading bread. I just do like 20, 30 seconds. Just get it all worked together. Let me give it a cut here in half. Try not to cut my table here. Should I put a board down? Okay, and now I'm going to take each half and shape them into loaves. This is where I am not talented, so don't judge me too harshly. It doesn't really matter. It's not like I'm selling them. seam under to the bottom and in our loaf pans. I'm going to hit each loaf with just a tiny bit of olive oil or vegetable oil here. Kind of spread it on there. Help keep it getting like a crust on top while it's doing its final rise. And then back under our proving plastic lock in that moisture. It's going to sit out for about five hours, four to five hours. You can even go all day. Like I said, it's a very slow rising bread. It's kind of hard to overprove it because it moves so slowly. So I usually do about five hours. So it's six in the morning right now, getting ready to make breakfast. I will cook this about 11 and we'll have it about noon for with our lunch. So I do want to show you real quick, just so you know, this is the starter we started new yesterday. You'll see it has fallen quite a bit. This is normal. This is a healthy starter for this type of bread. It is now going to go in the fridge. So again, your timeline is make your starter, sit it out at room temperature for 24 hours, put it in the fridge for five days, take it out and feed it, sit it out for 12 hours or all day overnight, however you want to figure that and then you will take out the amount you need to make your recipe, put your starter back in the fridge, and go ahead and start your bread. So I will see you in about five hours when we bake this bread and have it for lunch. It is now 11 o'clock, yay! So our loaves are ready for the oven. You notice, that again, this is not a dramatic bread. It has definitely risen, but it's not, you know, humongous. We have the oven preheated to 350 and I have about a tablespoon and a half of butter here in this cup that's just going to sit on this warm stove top and melt because when we're all done baking our loaves we're going to spread some butter on top. We are going to check them at 30 minutes, but they usually take more like 40 minutes to cook. Okay, come sit down for lunch. These are looking and smelling great. So now we are just going to brush them with our melted butter. It's lunchtime. I got your lunch here. Alright, that's it. We're going to enjoy some homemade bread and soup. And Ivy will just eat the bread and not the soup. Right. Yeah, I know. And I don't like it. Mommy. One day they will appreciate the vegetables I tried. Mommy. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you soon. Bye. I love you, mommy. I love you too.